Hello everyone, welcome to the MLM Lunchtime Leadership Show. <laughs> I am Bess McCarty, coach for Business and Life and also called the Shrink of MLM. Usually, I partner with Jeffrey David Gamble to bring you this show Monday through Friday at noon Eastern Time. We're having some difficulties um, getting my phone to register onto a dual screen, so we're taking turns until we might, we might try Zoom or something like that to come up with a solution for both of us. So, welcome everyone right now. And... Um, I probably need to invite some friends. Can I do that? I don't, nope, it doesn't let me invite people. Hmm. Well, changes, <laughs> changes. I don't see how I can invite people here. So, <clears throat> um, okay, <laughs> changes, go with the flow. Um, MLM Lunchtime Leadership Show. Today is show number seven, the law of respect. And that's a very interesting law. I have some really, um, uh, um, oh, some, some thoughts to share with you about that. Um, first of all, I'd like to just introduce what the show is. This is a generic show sponsored by our generic school for network marketers, the MLM Millionaire Academy. And our purpose is to help people grow, to educate, equip, and empower entrepreneurs and create independent servant leaders and to give back to this profession. What we do is we cover every weekday at noon Eastern time. We cover one of the 21 irrefutable laws of leadership by John Maxwell. And this is a book. It's the number one leading um, leadership book in the world by the number one leadership expert in the world, John Maxwell. He's written over a hundred books on this topic and they're each one just incredible. So what we do is we take one of the 21 laws every weekday here and do a deep dive into that and share with you different angles and stories. And of course, there's there's no limit to how good we can get at each of these laws. So I just love the reviews that we, we go ever, over uh, once a month. Uh, so once a day, we cover one of these laws <clears throat> from new and different angles. So repetition is the mother of success, but each one of these laws, I could spend a year studying and developing in myself, I know. And each of the laws, they, they work independently, but they do overlap and um, they do relate to each other. However, you can come on to the show anytime that you want and just pick up what you can here, food for thought and where you can grow for lunch. Um, <clears throat> but ignorance of the laws, John, John Maxwell says, yes, you need all 21 law of these laws for leadership. <clears throat> and ignorance of them does not excuse us from reaping the consequences of not following the laws the laws of nature, the laws of life, and the laws of people. And if you want to follow along, that's what the, the um, you can get an ebook, <clears throat> a free ebook that we make available at our Facebook group, the MLM Lunchtime Leadership Show. So you can go there, you can request membership, you can request the free ebook and follow along, or just come in and listen if you want. But that, that um, Facebook group is very nice because you can scroll down and find all the past replays there, and you can find over 500 other MLM leaders. So I'm not sure if there's any other group like that on Facebook to find leaders. This is what people are saying about this show. Um, Nancy Siegel says, I'm going to listen to the replay several times today until it all sinks in, and especially if I need a self-push in the right direction during a moment. Um, thanks for doing these. You're welcome. Our pleasure. And we do love your responses. Uh, if you're watching the replay, I'd love if you type in replay. And if you um, know someone who can benefit from this, we, I'd love if you share with them, tag, um, share into another Facebook group that could be watching live at the same time. Um, <clears throat> yep, I'm still not able to invite people. This is really weird. I actually got a new iPhone 11 just for the purpose of doing this show when I thought it was my old phone that wasn't letting me get on the dual screens. But this one is doing the same thing. Does anyone out there <laughs> um, have a clue as to how to solve this, even with a brand new iPhone, cannot getting on Facebook Live to join someone else in a dual screen like, like Jeff? And even now I cannot invite people. I think this is, I'm, I was hoping, you know, the first time it happened, I just hoping it was a glitch of Facebook's and then the next day we'd get on and it would be solved, but it was there again. So I said, okay, it's time for a new iPhone anyway. I had an iPhone 6, so uh, I had one overnighted <laughs> so that it could arrive here because I live in kind of a rural area. 
And um, so it arrived and it, it did the same thing. So quite a mystery. <clears throat> um, <laughs> would love to solve it. However, I am grateful for Facebook and being able to do the lives and sit here with you all and talk with you all and reach across the world. Even if I can't invite anybody right now or invite Jeff on. So pretty crazy. I, I don't see any comments or if people are on or not. So if you are on, I'd love if you type in hello <laughs> or yes, I'm here or yes, I want to be a better leader or yes, I'm watching the replay or just to let me know you're there because I'm not sure I can, can see that. Okay, the laws of leadership. There are 21. Today is law number seven, the law of respect. And first of all, I would like to pay respect to the veterans today. Happy Veterans Day. Thank you each for serving our country and serving us, even though we may never know what that truly means, what you've gone through, what you, what you had to endure physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually to be a veteran. You could tell us, but I don't think I could ever fully really grasp it, know, or stand in your shoes. Some of you have paid a huge price with your bodies or your, your mental health or your emotional health and um, for our freedom <clears throat> so that we can remain free here. Um, I think this is the best country in the world. Not perfect at all. Has a lot of problems <laughs> to solve. But yet I don't know of um, a better country right now that has this much freedom and opportunity. And you have fought for us, so thank you very much. I have some dear friends who are veterans, and this is Gratitude Day and Respect Day for you. So this respect, uh, this law of respect, law number seven, the law of respect. And John Maxwell says, well, people follow leaders who are stronger than themselves in a bunch of areas. Um, he says that can be natural ability or, and in these areas, I'm going to, I'm going to list six areas that he defines as, as respect. And one is natural, your natural ability. Uh, one is the respect that you have for others versus intimidating or control or bullying, the respect, the regard. And, um, by the way, a definition of success is the act of giving particular attention or consideration means high regard for others and ourselves too and high or special regard like esteem so that is how Webster defines respect and so he says number two here is respect for others and I'll include that as respect for ourselves and talk about that in a minute. And he said it also includes the courage to do right. Even when we risk failure, even when it's hard, even when it might be dangerous or illicit criticism, that we still do the, the, the right thing. And don't you respect people like this? Don't you know people like this? Have you ever done this yourself? And you have more respect for yourself too, of course. Number four, he says, respect shows up in success, or people respect people, uh, respect leaders who are greater than themselves in these areas. And one of them is success, including your past success, because people want to follow this. They want to be part of success, so they want to like join on your onto your wagon. Um, another one is loyalty, to stick with things and follow through things, do what we say we're going to do. And there's a basic human instinct that needs consistency. That is one of them. That is one of something we can count on, can't, something we can depend on. Um, <clears throat> adding value to others is another way that we get respect um, by complimenting, edifying. He covers this in the Law of Addition, where you, you listen to people and you compliment them and, and, and build them up. So those are the ways, the six ways that he says respect shows up, John Maxwell says this. So uh, I invite you to rate yourself on these things and work on these for a month. See where the, your, your weak point is and find, find the weak one, for example, the weakest one, and turn that into a habit. And ask those closest to you, what do they respect the most about you? And what areas do you need to work on? 
And this can get you out of your comfort zone, right? Us, at us out of our comfort zone to ask such a question. He also suggests to look at the caliber of people you attract and how they respond when you ask for a change or commitment. That's another sign of respect, or I could say a sign of influence as well. So this respect, um, as a body-mind psychologist <laughs> and a, a counselor, I like to look at uh, the psychology of this. And the respect for others comes back to respect for ourselves. Because how could we, how could we have respect for others if we don't yet respect ourselves, right? And where does this respect come from? You know, how do we regard ourselves? How do we care for ourselves? How do we treat ourselves? Um, do we do we feed ourselves good food? Do we exercise? Do we get enough rest? Do we figure we deserve success? You know, how much do we respect? And what kind of regard do we have for ourselves? This is a good question. It can show up in areas, for example, I find myself rushing myself or pushing myself or trying to do more than I, I um, and oh, that is that is good for me sometimes, you know, in the loo, okay, the job must be done, the show must go on and ignore my body's signals or needs too often. Um, if I do that too often, then I get sick or something happens where my body just goes on strike and rebels. So I can't do that too often, but that has been a tendency of mine in the past <clears throat> to not care for or respect myself as much as the people that I serve. And so now I have a new saying that says, I count among the people that I serve. I count among them. I'm just as important as the people I serve. And it's just important to treat myself with love and respect as it is to treat another person. I might say, oh, no, I wouldn't rush or push another person, but I would, I would myself. So I think that true respect for others, in my experience, comes from respecting myself first as a foundation. Because how could I respect, it's this reflection, how I, how I respect others is a reflection of how I respect me and treat me. I just recently became a grandmother to a little baby girl and um, going to visit them soon. And I already hold her very precious, the pictures. I just, I just adore the pictures and love them. And seeing these pictures has me respecting and regarding the preciousness of life more. When I see her, I see the beauty, the preciousness of each of us. I see the preciousness in her. It's easy to see it in her. And then I remember, hey, I am no less than that, and neither is my neighbor, neither is every single person. Every single person was a baby and still carries that preciousness within them. And that's why I do inner child work with people because it's a lot easier for, um, you know, as a therapist, it's a lot easier for people to see themselves as an inner child and regard themselves and respect themselves and care about themselves and love themselves than it might be their adult self. They go, oh no, I wouldn't push my child to do this, but I'd push me to do this, right? Or I wouldn't treat my child this way. <clears throat> I wouldn't let my child forget to brush their teeth, but I forget to brush my own, right? Or something like that. <clears throat> I wouldn't let my child stay up past midnight, but me, I'll stay up till 2 a.m. working on a project right? No, I want my child to go to bed and get their rest. So, you know, do I treat myself? Do I respect and regard myself and treat myself the same way? So that was the, um, the message about respect that I wanted to bring you today. A really good poem, I mentioned this before, so I won't go into it, but a really good poem about this is If, called Rudyard, by Rudyard Kipling. Um, he was a poet, story writer, and he wrote this great long poem that says, if you can you know, rise in the night when the children need it. And if you can do the right thing, even when all those about you are saying you're wrong, and if you can um, keep your head when all around you are losing theirs, you know, then you are a man, my son, or my daughter. So that's a great poem to show character and to another one, a good one to measure ourselves against. I hope this helped today to give some insights. This is the law of respect. And tomorrow is Tuesday, and Jeffrey David Gamble will be back here, and he will do the live tomorrow. Um, and tomorrow is the law of intuition, separates the good from the great. So we hope that you enjoyed the show, and um, 
if you wonder about um, somebody says they didn't see hmm, Facebook may have not changed my setting I change it from private to public but I'll go ahead and try to fix that right now so y'all can find it okay thank you take care bye bye